section 5.2 sigma notation and limits of finite sums so this symbol here it's called sigma notation and this is the starting uh, value k equal 1 up to k equal n this is ak ak is the formula for the kth term for example let me just give you one example uh, if I say k starts from 1 to 5 of let's say a k the meaning of this is there are five terms a1 a2 a3 a4 and a5 I'm just replacing this k by from 1 to 5 and then in between those two terms those terms there is a symbol plus sigma notation means summation sum of all these terms starting from 1 to 5 okay so uh, some of the examples here as you can see the first one k equal 1 to 5 in our case here ak is k itself so we are just adding just plugging k equal 1 2 3 4 5 and adding them the sum should be 15. second example here k equal 1 to 3 so there should be three terms and then each term has negative 1 to the power k wherever you see k you just replace that by 1 2 and 3 and then if you add them you are going to get negative 2 that's the sum and if you do the same thing for third one and fourth one whenever wherever you see k you just replace that k by 1 and 2 for the number 2 number 3 and that will give you this sum 7 over 6 for number 4 you replace uh, k by 4 and 5 it starts at 4 and it goes up to 5 so k equal 4 k equal 5 and that's the sum so there are these are the sum uh, algebra rules for finite sum so sigma notation of ak plus bk is actually sigma notation of ak plus sigma notation of bk so you can split that and there is a minus sign so you can split that and if you see you know some constant times ak then you can bring that constant outside and uh, constant value rule means if you are trying to find out the summation of c from k equal 1 to n there is no k in c c is constant so what you are doing here is when k is 1 the value of the term is c when k is 2 the value of the term is c again you go up to you know n many c that's why the value would be n times c <clears throat> these are some rules and there are some formula for standard summation thing uh, for example if you would like to add first k n uh, you know natural number that is n times n plus 1 over 2 this is actually 1 plus 2 plus up to n so this is the sum of the first n natural number this is sum of first square of the natural number <clears throat> first n natural number this is sum of uh, cube of first n natural number and that's the formula whenever you have this kind of you know sum you would like to find you can always use this formula uh, one example here express the following sum in sigma notation so as you can see here it's a start from 1 and it goes up to 25 there is nothing and uh, nothing is missing one two three so the first term is one second term is two third term is three so we can say that kth term is k itself okay if we if we just uh, replace this k by one for the first term two for the second term three for the third term and we're just adding all those terms that's why we have to introduce this sigma notation and that k is going from one to twenty five this is the sigma expression for this sum if you want to find out the value of this you can use this formula n times n plus 1 over 2 here in this case n is 25 so 25 times 25 plus 1 over 2 which is 25 times 13 which is <clears throat> what is that uh 250 plus 75 is 325 i'm just multiplying 25 times 10 plus 25 times 3 okay <clears throat> let's take one um, you know uh, continuous uh, function uh, which uh, look like this from point a to point b and uh, under the you know over a close interval this is a close interval a to b 
Now we'd like to introduce something here. So let's take this curve of function f of x. So now we are going to divide this interval a to b into sub intervals like uh, you know x1, x2, x3, x4, keep going up to xn. So we are dividing this a to b into n sub intervals. The first of this sub interval is as you can see here x0 to x1. The second is x1 to x2 and then third one and the fourth one and keep going. You will be able to see kth sub interval. This is the kth one where k is an integer between 1 to n. The width of the first sub interval is denoted by del x1. Let's assume that this is just a notation for width of the first one. And similarly, you can denote this width of the second one as a del x2, and width of the kth one would be del xk. This del x, it just means you know this width. <clears throat> okay, so now we can, you know, just uh, define a set of these, uh, you know, values x0, x1, x2 to xn. This set is called partition of AB. So we are just dividing this AB into different sub interval by using these points and set of these points is called partition. Okay. So now in each sub interval, for example, let's say this sub interval xk minus 1 to xk, we select some point. The point chosen in the kth sub interval is CK. Let's say that is CK. Then on each sub interval, we stand a vertical rectangle that stretches from the x axis to touch the curve at ck, comma fck. Meaning, if you remember this curve here, let's say your ck is somewhere here, ck. Let's say this is in uh, c xk minus one and xk. The meaning of that statement is we just try to draw a rectangle through this height. Make sense? This is what they are talking about. We try to draw this uh, rectangle through using this uh, point ck the coordinate of this point is ck comma f ck that's what we're talking here these rectangles can be uh, above or below the x-axis depending on the curve and uh, if it's above the x-axis that means the value of the function at ck is positive if it's below the x-axis the value of the function at ck is negative and if uh, the you know it's on the x-axis the value of the function at ck would be zero so if it's above the x-axis the product of the value of the function and then width that gives us you know the area of that rectangle we were talking about this rectangle the product of the value of the function at ck which is this height times the width which is del xk that gives us the area but if it's below the axis that gives us actually negative of the area okay so now, you know, we're talking about this kind of a structure. This is the curve. And by, you know, we uh, use the partition x0 to xn to divide this interval a to b. And on different sub interval, we are keeping different points like c1, c2, c3, ck. And using those points, we're trying to draw these rectangles. And now we are trying to find out the area of these rectangles if it's above the x-axis. And then negative of the area of the rectangles if it's below the x-axis. Now, if you just multiply this, the value of the function at these points, which gives us the height of that rectangle, and del x, which gives us the width of that particular rectangle. So we are just, you know, multiplying height and width. Sometimes it would be area of the rectangle if the function value is above the x-axis. And if it's below the x-axis, it gives you the negative of the area. We can write it down as a sigma notation sigma notation means we are trying we can write it uh, like you know the summation sum of the value of the function at ck times del xk where this del xk means it's the you know the width of each of the sub interval actually this sigma notation this sum is called riemann sum which uh, which was you know introduced by german mathematician bernhard riemann so uh, you know this is very useful information this Riemann sum I'm going to use one example where we're going to find out this Riemann sum by using different points so um, more you make this sub interval more you make this rectangle more approximation results we are going to get the curve of figure 5.9 so this is the you know 
if you remember the figure 5.9 this is the figure 5.9 the curve of the figure 5.9 with rectangles from final partition of av final partition create collection of rectangles with a thinner basis that approximate the region between the graph of f and the x-axis with increasing accuracy more you use these rectangles more approximately you can you know um, uh, find the region between the curve and the x-axis so we're going to see one example here graph the function x square minus 1 over the interval 0 to 2 so this is the parabola over 0 to 2 partition the interval into four sub interval of equal length so here we are going to divide this uh, 0 to 2 uh, into four equal intervals so that means if you divide 0 to 2 which is uh, 2 divided by 4 that would be half so this is what we are going to get these are the points on the sub interval then add to your sketch the rectangles associate with the Raman sum this is what we are going to find out but while finding this Raman sum we would like to use a first time left hand left hand in point second time right hand in, in point and then third time midpoint of the kth sub interval so each time we're going to get different Raman sum so I'm going to show you for the left hand in points let's say we're dividing this uh, sub interval 0 to 2 into 4 sub this interval 0 to 2 into 4 sub interval <clears throat> so now since we are using left endpoint on this sub interval so as you can see that to draw rectangle we are using 0 half 1 and 3 over 2 these are the left endpoint so as you can see here if you use the 0 so that means you are trying to create a rectangle of height uh, you know this this height and uh, that will give us this rectangle if you use the second point as a you know uh, to create the rectangle for the so basically we are using the you know end points left end points of these intervals to create this rectangle and this is what you are going to get one two and because at this point there is a function value zero so the rectangle will won't have any height here so you are just going to see three rectangles so in this case if you would like to find out this Riemann sum which is basically the value of the function at c1, c2, c3, and c4. And this width, this width is always half for no matter what k you are going to pick, either 1, 2, or 3, or 4. So I can keep this del x k outside. I'm going to just plug the value of c1, c2, c3, and c4. So by looking here, as you can see that the c1 would be 0, c2 would be half, c3 would be, um, you know, 1, and c4 would be 3 over 2. So we need to find out the value of the function at 0, half, 1, and 3 over 2. And these are the values. So this value of the function at different c, ck, this is the value. If you add these numbers, this is what you are going to get, 1, one fourth times uh, 1 half. That is eventually 1 eighth. That's the Raman sum of this, you know, uh, 4 uh, sub interval using the left in point. This is the Raman sum. The second time we're going to use the right in point. So this is the same graph, same number of sub interval, but to create the you know rectangle, we're going to use right endpoint. So for the first sub interval, right endpoint is half. For the second one, the right interval is one. For the third one, the right interval is three over two, and then for the fourth one, the right interval is two. By using those points, so if we try to create rectangles, then these are the rectangles we're going to get. Again, three rectangles, and then to find out this Riemann sum. You just have to plug c1 which is half the value of the function at half 1 3 over 2 and 2 so let's find out this value of the function by using x square minus 1 and these are the value of this function at these different points if we plug this value of the function here and multiply it by the width of this sub interval which is half this is the Raman sum we're going to get by using the right end point so as you can see uh, previously by using the left in point we got 1 8 by using the right in point we got 7 over 4 finally we would like to find we would like to use uh, this uh, we'd like to find this Raman sum by using the midpoint of the kth sub interval so once again there are four sub interval we are going to use midpoint of each of them which is uh, for the first one 1 fourth for the second one 3 fourth which is the midpoint of half and one 
and then for the third one which is 5 over 4 and then fourth one which is 7 over 4 so by using these points we're going to draw rectangles like this one this one this one and this one and we're going to just add uh, the height of these rectangles and then multiply it by width which is basically half so if you try to find out the value of the function at these points these are the value you're going to get and if you add them you're going to get 5 over 4 as a random sum if you use the midpoints on the kth sub interval.